is it. Wish we could actually uh, do a little shot around here, but I'll, I'll send you some more videos on that. Yeah. Um, but we have a much better space, as you can see, these lovely monitors in the back. <laughs> and we have new, new mics, some wonderful flowers. Some flowers. Yeah. Anything that we say <laughs> is not meant to diagnose you. It's just meant to give you food for thought. Um, you know, if you become cured of any diseases, don't, don't mention don't our names. Us. Yeah. All right. So we have a lot to talk about today. Mm -hmm. We have some quizzes. quizzes. We have some announcements. Good. So, and then um, also um, there is some, yeah, basically we have some great data. So I was going to jump right to it, but I'm going to withhold that information. Going to keep a secret. Yeah. All right. But I do want to jump right into the calls because there's people who have been waiting for quite a long time, for hours. So, uh, and if you want to call in, the, the number is down below. You can check it out. Uh, let's go right to Antoine uh, from New York. You've been waiting patiently. You had a question. Your blood work is worse after keto and IF. Tell me about that. Yeah, so maybe I can give you some uh, background. Yeah, uh, real, in a thumbnail sketch. Because I have kind of like a half half good story, half bad story. Uh, so like a year ago, I did a blood test, and my HDL was good. Uh, above 50, my triglycerides were under 100. My remnant cholesterol was at 19. Okay. Uh, but I had been diagnosed with a fatty liver. Okay. Uh, and I was eating a ton of carbs, drinking a lot of alcohol. Uh, I had a lot of inflammation. Like every time I went to the gym, I had like random injuries. Uh, so like, and I had started accumulating a belly. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started to do something about it. And my friends recommended IF. And I had also heard about low carb. So I started doing IF uh, and lower carb. And I, I lost my belly in four months. Wow. That's uh, good. Uh, and yeah. All my inflammations went down completely. Like I was able to like go to the gym five times a week. Everything was great. Uh, then but the thing is, like people were looking at me and were, were like, "Wow, you dropped a lot of weight. Like why?" Uh, and so I was like, "Okay, I, I try. I want to regain some." So like I I, go, I went on keto and I did like really high fat. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was feeling pretty good, uh, but I did a blood test. And the results are pretty scary. Uh, my my cholesterol went up like a lot. My HDL went down. My triglycerides went up from under 100 to above 150. Uh, my remnant cholesterol went from 19 to 32. Uh, and then also I started noticing some weird things when I. Because I was eating a lot of avocados, like two, two a day. Mm -hmm. uh, I started noticing some weird, like, like gut, like uh, inflated feelings. That was kind of weird. So okay. I, I'm, I'm not sure what to do. Like the doctor was like, I don't want to put you on medication right away. Like go back to eating more carbs. Yeah, let me, uh, let me just, let me just kind of give you some tips, okay? Um, the first thing I want to say is that um, um, I don't think it's the avocados. Okay, so the other thing is um, two avocados per day is not that much. Um, there's no way your cholesterol is going to go that high from eating avocados. I think, and you've been saying you've been eating a lot of fat. So the uh, first thing is like, are you doing the program um, that I'm recommending? Because there's so many different versions of keto. So that's one point. We want to make sure that you're doing it. Um, the second thing is sometimes you want to play around with um, what you're eating. There's so many people when they do keto, they do a lot of um, MCT oil. <clears throat> they do a lot of oil, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of um, peanut butter. They're not actually looking at the quality um, of, of food. And the other question is, are you doing enough vegetables, seven to 10 cups? I mean, some people don't do that. Um, I believe that it's important, especially for the, your gut health. Um, the other thing is like, are you doing moderate protein? Are you doing a lot of protein? So these are all just factors I would look at. The other point I want to bring up is sometimes um, when you do keto, you, um, you start doing a lot of spinach. People do chocolate and almonds and almond flour. That can spike oxalates and create a lot of inflammation in the body if you're prone to that, even potentially irritate or you know, develop a kidney stone. Um, but I would um, adjust some things, especially um, to improve your liver. 
the fact that you had, you know, you were, you were doing this, uh, you know, alcohol and these other things and you had some liver issues, I would um, really focus on your liver, like foods for the liver, mainly. Uh, choline is very, very important. I would take purified bile salts, bile salts to help uh, keep things flooded through the gallbladder because really it's the bile salts and even some of the times the choline in the choline byproducts or uh, things that choline turn into that help emulsify and break down the triglycerides and the cholesterol. But be because you're doing more fat, you, you are going to have more triglycerides. You are going to have more cholesterol. So that's a normal thing, but um, you might want to add some things to that. It would be really good for you to come to the summit because we're going to really go dive into this hardcore, which we're going to actually, the summit's going to be the 20, 29th of August. So you should consider. 31st. The 31st of August. Thank you. <laughs> um, but to come out, because there are going to be two cardiologists that are going to be there. They're going to go more heavy, hardcore into this. So anyway, thanks for your call and um, hope to see you soon. Hey, Leanne, you're from Boston. You had a question. Go ahead. Yes, Dr. Berg. Um, and this is just a very simple question. I, I want to do like an extended five-day fast. Um, when I got to about, I did a 72-hour fast. When I got to about 68 hours, my blood sugar went down to 39. Okay. Um, and I just want to know, is there something I can do to prevent my blood sugar from going down or just, or am I just not able to do an extended fast for that long? So question I have, Leanne, are, when, you, when your blood sugar went that low, what did you feel like? Did you feel normal? I felt, no, I didn't feel normal. I felt, um, I felt kind of dizzy. I felt mm -hmm. very weak. You know, like I needed to, to rest and lay down. Yeah, okay. So here's, yeah. some, here's some tips on that. Um, I think you need to kind of back off a little bit and not go that long yet. You want to really gradually work up to this because here you are going on a fast. Your body's going into ketosis hardcore. You're not running on a lot of sugar. Your body's making sugar from the food that you're eating, but you're not eating, so it's, you're living off your, your fat. Um, you might want to go into this more on a gradient um, level very gradually and then maybe do 48 hour fast for a while until your body can fully adapt to that. But you know, it's normal for your blood sugars to drop, but the key is how you feel. Because if you're running on your fat and you're very efficient and everything's working and your liver's healthy, you and it's you should feel fine. But if you're feeling kind of funky, it, all this means is your liver is not able to um, produce enough um, transition fuel. Um, so there are certain parts of the brain, for example, that do need a little bit of sugar, but your body can make that from something called gluconeogenesis. So you're, it tells me that the liver is just not uh, working 100% yet. But go back, do a small a level of that, and then gradually ease up, um, gradually increase the amount of uh, fasting that you do over a period of time. Thanks, Leanne. All right, Karen, what do we have people calling from? Oh, I didn't write a list, but... Uh uh, Morocco, all over the United States, Canada, Malaysia. 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 I said Morocco. Uh, now everyone's probably going to start writing down. But yes, I've seen I've seen some people saying hello from all That's over so cool. the world. That is so as awesome. usual, as usual. Good. Do you have any questions? I do. Good. What question? Okay. So Greg uh, says he has 25 carbs a day. Yeah. And um, he's very, very tired. Yeah. And he cannot get into ketosis. So it's the only information I have. Okay, so based on that incomplete information, right. um, there's a couple things you need to know. Um, when you're making the transition, and this basically kind of leads me into the kind of topic I'm going to talk about today. Um, why do people fail on keto and intermittent fasting? Um, one thing is like they have too many symptoms in the transition phase. So I always recommend adding nutrients in a, above what you're eating from your diet. Like number one, we need potassium, okay? Mm -hmm. From some electrolyte powder or just potassium. So. Need more of that. Mm -hmm. B1 mm -hmm. from nutritional yeast. Right. 
and sodium from sea salt because those three things should handle any transitional weirdness or things that you're going through. Um, so that being said, I, I don't know what he's eating. So the chances are he could be eating the wrong type of, you know, like I've talked to people like, oh yeah, I'm doing chicken wings and um, sour cream. I'm like, okay, so that's not the program I'm recommending. If you do it correctly, like I recommend in the book, you should do fine and you shouldn't have these problems. The other thing is that um, the reason people fail on intermittent fasting, and I want to just bring, the, I want to just want to talk about that right now. Talk about it. I, I think there's a, there's a mental problem, a mental aspect to this that people run into because... Mental meaning the thought mental. process about doing keto. Yeah, because... Like it, a consideration process. Because food is survival. So I'm gonna, we're going to deny you of food. What does that bring up? A lot of issues with, right. with um, you know, taking away your, depriving like you. It's dangerous, it's yeah. hard. Yeah, it's you're going to stop loss. eating. loss, you're going to have. Can't eat food, everyone else is eating. So right. that it's a, it brings up kind of a, a barrier mentally for people. But what I want, I want you guys to realize is this. You're actually eating food that you ate maybe six months to a year ago. It's in the form of fat. Mm. Could be like, I don't know, two years, I don't know. It's like carrying like a, 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 a cooler around or your lunch, packed but your lunch. old food. Really, oh. The question is that, you know, and I don't know the answer to this, but if you, how, when was your fat created? You know, was it, was it six months ago, a year ago, 10 years ago? Like okay. people carry around a lot of fat. They're not tapping into that. That's old food being changed into <laughs> fat. Sounds, it, sounds it sounds disgusting. Awful. It does. It sounds awful. But There's probably a better way about. to spin that. Well, the point is this. Finally, after all these years, you're able to tap into this food that you haven't really burned off yet. And so the point is, the point I'm circling back at, Karen, okay. is that um, you are eating. It's just that you're not eating current food. <laughs> right, you're not. You're tapping you, into your you, fat. I you, think the point is that your body is accessing energy and even, what is it nutritious? It's fuel. And it's there are fuel. certain vitamins in there, but it's not complete. But the point is you're tapping into a fuel source uh, that you're running your body off. You're not starving. Right. You're using your, the thing that your body was meant to use, which is fat storage. I mean, why is it that your body can store so much fat and just a little bit of sugar? Our bodies were meant to burn this fat. Hmm. So, so I guess the, the thing you have to uh, realize, guys, is that you are not starving your body. You are eating. It's just that you're, it's a different fuel source. Okay? So that's number one. Number two, is this, if you're feeling worse, all that means is you need electrolytes and B vitamins. And that should solve it, and sea salt. Now, what's gonna happen too is you're gonna plateau at some point. And this is where people, there are probably a lot of questions, like mm -hmm. what do I do if I'm plateaued? At all the time. I lost weight initially, then I plateaued. Um, if you lose weight initially, a lot of it, that's just you're losing water weight, um, your body's gonna go through ebb and flow depending on what's going on with how sick your body is and how much repair that you need. Um, the main thing that you need to focus on is the positive health factors. Energy, hunger going away. Those two things, if that's happening, then it's working. Right. If your cravings are, are still there, then you're doing it wrong. Um, but the hunger should go away, your cognitive improvements, inflammation, just like the caller um, talked about. Inflammation drops, massive health benefits, um, and then the other thing you want to, if you're not doing this correctly, and what I'm talking about is if you're doing like this five and two plan, you know what that is, where you eat oh. pretty much what you want five days of the week, and then two days of the week, you go on a 500 calorie diet. That's not intermittent fasting. That is a low calorie type program. Right. And then the other thing is that there's what's called alternative day fasting, where every other day you eat what you want, and then the on the other days that you have 500 calories. That's right. not fasting. It's missing a lot of information on how the body works. You can say that again. It's missing a lot of information on how the body works. The other thing that I think always bears repeating is a lot of people do keto and intermittent fasting to lose weight. Right. And they get frustrated when they're not losing weight. Women in particular, for whatever reason, it's sometimes harder for women to lose the weight initially. Why is that? What? I wasn't finished with my oh, question, and then the answer goes to you because you're Dr. Burke. Okay.
But, uh, but uh, I think what bears repeating is the point that your body has to heal and it's going to prioritize what it needs to heal, right? That's right. It's not always going to, oh, you know, I changed my eating and I'm beginning to get more energy and I'm getting the right fuel source and I'm getting these things. Let's just lose weight and burn fat because that's what Susie wants to do. It's going to handle some other things so that you can sleep better, so that your systems, your organs are healing and your system's healing. Well, I think that um, there's two things. Number one, and I'm going to talk about this when you guys come to the Keto Summit. Um, there's a priority system of how your body heals and a priority system of how your body absorbs nutrients. In other words, let's take vitamin C, for example. Um, you have, at the very extreme, you have scurvy. You have all these different symptoms, bleeding gums and things like that. Mm -hmm. But vitamin, D, uh, vitamin C is used for many different things. If you're deficient in vitamin C, it will, it will go after the most important things but it might not fulfill all the functions that you need in your body. So what are those functions and what does it go after first versus last? We're gonna talk about that. It's a very interesting topic to identify subclinical symptoms with vitamins and minerals. So, so you're um, gonna talk about that? I'm gonna talk about at that the summit. at the summit. Um, and it's gonna be very interesting with that. But the other thing I wanna mention with um, getting healthy in general is the main, main thing that that happens when you get healthy is the, is the repair actions with proteins and amino acids. Um, and I just released a video on, on this branch amino acids when people think, oh yeah, it's gonna repair your proteins. Uh, no, it's not, that's a myth. It's only three, branch chain amino uh, acids, only three amino acids. So it's very incomplete and um, you need all nine. Now there's certain people that say there's eight essential amino acids. You need nine uh, essential amino acids to build muscle protein. And um, if you, unless you're getting all of them, you're not going to repair it. And this is why we recommend the healthy version of keto, which we're doing high quality protein. We're not doing like massive protein powder from whey protein mm -hmm. that you're getting from GNC. You're doing actually from real food. And or this from is anywhere. how you build. Right. You don't actually um, absorb a lot of the protein when you eat I mean, amino acids from protein. It's like, like 16 to you know, 18%, sometimes 19%. I will do another video on that. Though. Okay. I don't want to get sidetracked. Okay. I think it's too late. But this is good information. Okay. Food for thought. Food. Right. Okay. Gary, Van you're from Vancouver, one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Um, you had a question. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah, so, um, having gone to the doctor yesterday, I was. Uh, uh, told that uh, my cholesterol was high and I was at the borderline where the doctor suggest, would suggest pills. Now, my father had high cholesterol and, and had a heart attack at the age of 57. I'm 53 years old and uh, I've been on the keto diet since um, uh, January. And both my wife and I, we've dropped about 27 pounds and we're maintaining right there, which is pretty good at 204 pounds right now and for myself. And uh, what I'm worried about is being predisposed to high cholesterol and with the diet, the keto diet, um, is there any way or anything that I can tweak to stay away from the uh, inevitable um, cholesterol pills? Yeah, good question. Can I ask you, I want to ask you a question. Your father, he died of... Um I guess a heart attack. Are you there? No, he eventually had a, a stroke. Um, no, okay. Years later. Okay, um, so did was his many diet years was later. his diet keto or did he do the regular, you know, sad diet? Uh, the regular diet. Um, yeah. Typical, okay. Typical, uh, uh, yeah, high cholesterol diet. Yeah. Here's the thing, okay, the main thing with um, when you go through cholesterol, and we've talked about this uh, many times, you can watch some videos, is that your cholesterol will go up because you're eating a little bit higher fat, uh, but you're lowering your, your uh, carbs. The danger of high fat really has to do with how much carb that you're eating at the same time. These people that are getting heart attacks, it's not the fat that's doing, it's the sugar with the fat or the sugar directly. That's what creates the inflammation that's what creates the oxidative cholesterol, that's what creates the damage in the arteries, 
That's what increases the thrombosis or the chance of getting clots and placking. It's the carbs. So you're, you're eating healthily now. You've lost the weight. Um, I think even you mentioned you may have even have a fatty liver in your text right here. I would, um, if you're really concerned about it, um, you should come to the summit for sure because we're going to have two cardiologists talk about this. And these guys actually do heart surgery. So it would be good to come to learn. But here's what I would recommend um, if you're concerned. Red yeast is very, very, um, it's a natural thing that helps regulate cholesterol. You can also do niacin, which helps reduce cholesterol. Uh, those are all things that you can do. And then just keep monitoring it. Also check your remnant cholesterol, which is even more a better indicator than these other things. So it's not just about total cholesterol. That actually, there's really little proof that that means anything. Anyway, Gary, thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Okay. So Mary's asking, she has a three and a half mile swim on Sunday. Should I eat before or just do BPC with fats and take my K2 and vitamin E? Well, I think it's really, really important to exercise when you're um, on your fast. You're going to get more benefit. It's like a workout when you're fasting. You'll just see um, greater improvements if you can do it because um, your body's going to start adapting to the fat oxidation, uh, fat fuel. So that's what I would recommend. Um, I mean, just see, you know, if your blood sugars are still an issue, and you might need to eat right before you work out. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay. I think we're ready for a quiz, Karen. Oh. A quiz. All right. All right, guys. Here's the first quiz. Number one question. What mineral is what has the greatest ability to enhance insulin function, which means support your blood sugars. What mineral do you rec uh, would you actually um, consider the most important in regulating your blood sugars, which basically mm. is enhancing the ability for insulin to work? Mm. Okay. So while people are digesting that information, I got, I got, I got. Um, let's go to Stacy from Georgia. Are you there, Stacy? I'm here. Hi. How, Hi. Are, you? how are you? Hi. I'm good. So I have two quick questions. Yeah. The first is goat raw goat milk. Um, how much can we drink on keto, or can we? Okay, good. And the second one is I'm 52. Okay. Okay, go ahead. You're 52. The second one is I'm 52, and um, I've been on keto since December, healthy keto just for a few weeks now. I have PMS symptoms this month that are just over the top, outrageous. How do I get rid of them? Okay, question about the PMS symptoms. Is that cramping or is it moodiness? N no, there's no moodiness, there's no cramping. I'm holding a lot of water weight. Oh, okay. I haven't changed my eating and I've gained four pounds. I've been a little bit out of breath. I do have the, um, the gallbladder formula, okay. which I've been taking. Okay. Um, got the nutritional yeast, the electrolyte, and the wheatgrass. Okay, great. So those I'll do every day. All right, let's talk about that. Uh, I think, uh, first of all, here's the problem. Goat milk is a lot better, obviously. Um, I would recommend goat milk cheese uh, instead of the goat milk. Now, you can do some cream in your cough if you want, but here's the thing. There, there's quite a bit of uh, carbs in milk in general. So that's what we're trying to do is avoid the carbs. That being said, if you have just a little bit and you, your carbs fall within the level that you need, I think you'd be okay. Um, but I wouldn't go crazy on drinking too much of it. The other thing is like the PMS. Um, if you are having fluid retention, you need B6 to push the fluid out. Okay, that's number one. If you have um, cognitive changes, that's a nice way of saying um, irritableness, right? Cognitive changes for PMS. No, it could be. Bright thinking. If someone is PMSing, that means that they're oh. might be highly irritable. I'm sorry. So um, I'm a woman. I just thought I might have something to say about Karen. PMS, let me. I'm I'm the expert in this. Okay? I. <coughs> okay. So here's what you can do. <laughs> B1, B1 T. for the uh, PMS uh, kind of like irritableness. But the other thing is like um, if you have cramps. You want to take calcium. Calcium um, orotate is really good for that. And um, you'll find that your 
cramps will be greatly improved. Okay. Better cramps? Greatly lessen, lessen cramps. How about that, Karen? <laughs> okay. the, um, yeah, and there's other things you can do, but I think that would be the best thing to focus on right now. Thanks, Stacy. All right, Karen, what do we have for our answers? Okay, so mostly, we, we, I mean, looks like magnesium, potassium, zinc, and chromium, a couple chromium. Uh, mostly magnesium and mm -hmm. potassium. Okay, so do we have a drum roll, please? I say zinc, but zinc. go ahead. Okay, all right. Drum roll of all the sound effects. There we go. All right, and the answer is chromium. Chromium, guys, chromium. that's awesome. So chromium is the is has some interesting um, receptors did, did for chromium no. with with insulin, and it actually will decrease the need for insulin. Wow. Um, so how do you get chromium? Well, from chrome. Sucking up. No, no, a no, car no. bumper. No, you don't want to do that. Um, we're talking about a food-based chrome. So. What food has the most chrome? And we can actually ask people or just tell them because I don't think they're going to guess it. Well, I don't know. I mean, that some of these guys said chromium was amazing. Yeah. Uh, so the number one food that has the most chromium is broccoli. Broccoli. Chopping broccoli. Chopping broccoli. Yeah. And then Chopping. it's green beans. There's some in beef, but mainly broccoli. That's like um, you're going to get a lot of chromium. You can take it in a supplement as well if you, okay. you want to help your blood sugars. But it's an essential trace mineral. Mm. Trace minerals. There's so it's in your trace minerals. Yeah, it is. Okay, good. Good yes. to know. It's also in barley, but we don't recommend barley because that's a grain. Right. Unless it's in the form of beer. I'm just kidding. Don't He's drink. Kidding. Don't drink that. Okay. All right. So let's go to the next caller, Melanie. You've been uh, waiting patiently. You're from New Jersey, Cherry Hill. Go ahead. Hi. Um. I actually, I, my question was about the, the sweetener, mm -hmm. and um, does, it real, does it affect um, the keto at all, even though it's um, like stevia, and Good is question. there anything else, anything better? Good question. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Melanie, um, we've, we've actually, I have a Facebook uh, group. It's called Facebook Keto Lab. We do all these experiments, and we tested the stevia. Stevia really, um, for most people, did not elevate the blood sugar, uh, knock someone out of ketosis or elevate blood sugar at all. So stevia, monk fruit, is totally fine. Uh, erythritol has zero effect on insulin, so that's another good one. But it's, it doesn't really 100% taste like sugar. It sort of does, but it can create some digestive issues. Uh, xylitol tastes like sugar, but it has a slight effect on insulin. So it's like on the glycemic index, it's 30. Still low if you don't take very much. Um, that'll be fine. I personally use xylitol. I like it. Other other combinations are like stevia and erythritol, and allulose al al is a really good one too. That's a new one. I, if I'm not mistaken, that's zero on the glycemic in index. Um, the worst one is maltitol. Avoid that one simply because it's like over 50 on the glycemic index. So I wouldn't, for, for the most part, you know, there's different sodas, there's different products with sugar alcohols, uh, I would not um, worry about those too much. Yeah, they're fine. They're not going to actually throw you out of ketosis unless you do a lot of them in bulk. Okay, thanks, Melanie. All right, Karen. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I'm trying to just look at the name here. Linda wanted to know, is there anything different that you need to do if you carry your weight in one place, like thighs? I mean, I know you... You have the body type information, but w yeah. regarding keto and IF, what can you do specifically, or do you have to do anything specifically if you carry your weight in your thighs? I think that's a really interesting question. Very interesting. Do you have All right, any other questions that you have? Answer for that? <laughs> yeah. Here, here's what you need to do. Um, the primary thing that happens with keto is you drop insulin. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually target the midsection. You're going to target the midsection. That's number one. Um, the love handles, the top roll of fat, which is actually a fatty liver, uh, the bloated stomach. Now, if you have fat on your thighs and you're behind, um, that's more of an estrogen problem. 
And so that's going to be improved over time, but it might be the last thing that goes. Mm. Um, mm. Mm. So mm. by eating healthily, your hormone levels should come back in the balance. But I did find you're going to have to also include this thing called um, exercise. exercise. I know. For some people like, but you know what? The combination of changing your diet and exercise will work uh, over time. But sometimes it could take, honestly, months even years, years, especially if you're postmenopausal because just of the, the hormone barriers that you're up against. Um, you know, that was my scene. I think, I think that women, they're up against estrogen. They have a lot more estrogen, and estrogen is a fat-making hormone. So we're, they're up against this thing. Estrogen gives the um, fat layer around the female body. It gives the shape of a female body. So if you have a healthy liver, you do keto, and then you also do exercise, eventually that should come into balance. Okay. Okay? Good. Any, and you want to comment on that or anything? No, anything? but I'm going to throw another question in there. Okay. Um, someone asked to have you say a little bit more about the pancreas body type, and is your new book going to mention that? Okay, Actually, guys. that was just my point because I you thought know, you did bring it up. Here's the thing. This is the book that I have, but I changed the name of it. It's called The Healthy, Healthy Keto, Keto Plan. Plan. But honestly, it's the same book. If you have this book, you don't need to get the other book. Well, I Why? thought you made some changes. Yeah. Do you know how many changes I made? How many? Like one. One. One or two changes. So you didn't put the pancreas body type? No, I did not. Okay. Um, but here's the thing. The pancreas body type is like the fifth body type. And... Um, I, the, the thing that I'm not making a big deal about it is because it's like the basic program that's in this in my book. You start with this, and you're addressing the pancreas directly. So you're direct, you're you're attacking the pancreas, dropping insulin, and you're making these amazing improvements. Then once you do that for a period of weeks, then you can switch to the other things if you need to tweak it as far as your body types. So if you feel you have the pancreas body type, which pretty much, that's that's beneath all other body. Types. You just do the keto and intermittent fasting. It should handle Healthy it. Healthy keto. It will handle it. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. No reason to buy anything else. Hey, Sherry, you're from Kentucky. You had a question. Go ahead. Hi, Dr. Bird. Hi. Hi, Karen. Hi. Well, my question is, um, I, well, let me give you a little back history, okay? I... Um, started keto last July mm -hmm. and I've done very well with it. I've lost 60 pounds as of March wow. 2019. Great. Good job. And everything's going well except my asthma seems to be getting worse. Okay. And um, so about three weeks ago I stopped eating bacon mm -hmm. because I thought, you know, well, my high blood pressure hasn't really come down, you know, mm -hmm. a lot. So I said, well, I'm going to leave bacon alone, alone since it's, you know, it seems like it was the, the issue. Okay. And then since then, my asthma has been on overdrive. Mm. Sounds like you need to put the bacon back in. <laughs> um, <laughs> let, me, let me explain what's happening. Um, asthma... Asthma symptoms is usually a vitamin D deficiency. So it's almost impossible to get your vitamin D from your diet. It's almost, it's actually, it is possible. It really is. Um, it's from the sun. But even then, even if you live in Kentucky where it's always sunny, um, <laughs> you might need to add vitamin D to your diet in higher amounts. I would do minimally 30,000 IUs, but then you have to add the K2 with it. I, I've done videos on this. But vitamin D3, and in the summer, just get a lot of, you don't probably need it if you get a lot of sun, but that will actually help your asthma symptoms greatly. The other thing about blood pressure, um, it's not avoiding the salt, it's increasing your potassium. If you add the potassium, there's electrolyte powder that I recommend, you can watch my videos on that, but that will usually help support healthy blood, um, blood pressure issues, okay? All right, Sherry, thanks for your call. And Karen? Yes. Do we have a question? Yes. 
Well, I have Lisa here on Facebook, and she says, if you aren't in ketosis after two to three weeks, well, she's helping someone out here, but let's address that. If you go for a period of time without getting into ketosis. Mm -hmm. Well, then it didn't work for you and probably go on to... Keto, go back to donuts. Yes. No, no, no. Sometimes it takes, sometimes it takes up to uh, five to six weeks to get into ketosis for some people that have maybe internal uh, issues. So the main thing is you can always make it better by um, cutting the carbs down, doing more fasting, and that will tweak it and make it, you'll actually get into it a lot faster. Hmm. But I think when you find out when people are doing keto, they're not doing it either correctly or they're not doing it en enough, I mean consistently. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's one issue that a lot of people run into. They, I know this is hard to believe, but some people do cheat on keto because it's they heard true. about the cheat, cheat day. Cheat day. Which could literally knock you out of ketosis for up to a week. Right. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was 72 hours. That was the old data. That was old data. Uh, the other thing is that sometimes people measure their ketosis with a urine test. Oh, right. So you could very well be in ketosis if that's what you're using to determine, but your body's utilizing those ketones and burning up the ketones. Yeah. Yeah, you can't really go on if you're in ketosis by your urine. Yeah. It's a good starting point, but you're going to be more efficient. You're going to be burning up these ketones. It's not going to show up. you thinking, I'm not in ketosis, so it's not working, right. but it actually is. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend going by these indicators to know if you're in ketosis. Number one, is your hunger going away? Is your cravings gone? How is your energy? How is your cognitive function? If you don't have those and you're also taking nutrients, which I always recommend, that usually handles like most of the symptoms, especially fatigue, then you might want to reevaluate your weak link in your body. Some people have a pre-existing hypothyroid. Some people have digestive issues. Some people have issues with inflammation. I would go after the weakest link in your body, improve that and chances are you'll all of a sudden get right back in it. It could be like chronic insomnia. And if you watch my recent videos on vitamin D, vitamin D is my next favorite topic because it's so vital and so many people have a deficiency and it handles so many issues. Uh, yeah, it, watch it, the It actually is interesting that for throughout my life, whenever I had a blood test, mm -hmm. everything would come back normal. Yeah. Yeah, you know, just nothing. But a few years ago, I started to have this deficiency of vitamin D, which I thought was really, really strange. Yeah. And then I was hearing other people had a deficiency in vitamin D. And then I heard it was epidemic, Yeah, which I thought was really fascinating. And I, I don't know if, if there's something in the diet that burns up more vitamin D, but uh, certainly we're not as a, as a culture getting as much sun as we used to. We sit in rooms and we sit in front of screens. Well, that's just it. Do right. you ever see kids outside any day, anymore? Well, I don't right. have kids that are outside. Remember when you were a kid? Did our you neighbors, go outside? Our neighbors, I see them outside every once in a while. Every once in a while. Right. So what happens is we're just staying inside more. We right. don't get enough sun. Um, your, the color of your skin, if it's darker, you need more vitamin D. Um, if you're older, you need more vitamin D. Mm -hmm. You have to expose yourself. Uh, to more uh, vitamin D, go, go to the beach more often. Uh, the other thing is if you're pregnant, you need to be taking vitamin D because if you're breastfeeding um, or pregnant, you're not going to get enough vitamin D. And that could directly influence how that child's immune system is going to be down mm -hmm. the road. The other thing is a lot of people are becoming deficient in vitamin D because their livers are either fatty or they don't have a gallbladder and they're not able to absorb it because they don't have enough mm -hmm. bile or their gut well, That explains imbalance. a lot. Yeah. That would explain a lot because people have these fatty livers more from a whole culmination of things from diet to meds to all other kinds the, of int interesting solutions. The and other that real makes big, a lot of sense. Yep. The, the other big thing that's actually um, when, you have, when you're exposed to glyphosate, and pretty much everyone is exposed to glyphosate, glyphosate, GMO foods, attack the, uh, the microbes the mm -hmm. biome, the friendly bacteria, and they mess with their pathways that are involved in not just making proteins and amino acids and neurotransmitters and things like that, but you recycle bile, 
with your microbes. 90% of all your bile is recycled by the, the microbes. Mm. So not enough healthy microbes, not enough vitamin D, and then you'll start having problems too with um, just the absorption of vitamin D. You can have normal vitamin D in your blood, but it's just not being absorbed. So this is a topic that I'm very interested in, and I'm going to be doing more videos on it because you can, it's such a no-brainer. It's like you can solve so many problems by very inexpensively. Hmm. Okay. All right, we need to go to uh, hear him from Salt Lake City, Utah. Are you there? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Hello? Hello, yeah. hi, how are you? Yeah, so, good, good. I'm a big fan. Um, I have, my question is, I've seen several videos on YouTube uh, of another guy that said that toothpaste breaks a fast. So I was like, that kind of like freaked me out. I'm like, what am I going to do now? Am I going to brush my teeth when I'm fasting? So yeah. that's my question. Does toothpaste break a fast? Well, especially if you swallow it. Um, and it has, and it has sugar, sugar in it. it. Um, and also deodorant breaks the fast and also shampoo breaks the fast. So you cannot shower anymore or brush your teeth <laughs> um, or dental floss because that has a lot of sugar. Now, um, the toothpaste is not going to be a problem, um, especially if you're brushing it with like a non-sugar. Like I don't think they, I don't think, maybe, I haven't looked recently because I don't buy toothpaste that has sugar in it, but just buy a, you know, like, Tom's from Maine. I, I think that's fine. Uh, some natural toothpaste. It's not going to break your fast. And spit it out. Yeah, don't swallow it. Um, and you can use deodorant as well. And you can use soap on your body. And shampoo. It's not going to break your fast. So that's a myth. Okay, and you can always test yourself with ketose before and after you brush your teeth. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, but if you actually, as a tip for people, I think I might have mentioned this last week, but I'll just have to tell people again, if you like to snack late at night, brush your teeth and it just destroys your ability to want to snack anymore. Just try it sometime, Karen. So wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So oh if gosh. you want to snack. And you want to avoid snacking. To avoid snacking, brush your teeth. It seems to reduce the, the pleasure of snacking. You know what we should do is we should create a, a gymnema toothpaste. Oh my gosh. That is brilliant. That's why I get the big bucks. So gemnema is an herb that completely blocks the, the sensation of the taste for sugar. We really need to. We, ha we used to have a product. Know, it I was know. called Sweet Free. Yeah. And um, we should do that again. Now someone else is going to do that because they're listening to us. But just know. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a great demo, and it's a it's a great way to ruin a party. Um, but it's a great assistant. It's a great assist too to somebody who's really trying hard, and they're just super weak in the beginning, or they feel like they can't do it. Or and there's nothing more motivating than having some gymnema, and then eating like anything. <laughs> a, but a but let cookie. me ask. Can I, have a, I have a question. It is horrible. I have a question. Yeah. Okay. So what would be better? Destroying the sensation of sweet, mm -hmm. okay? Turning all this great food that you love into bitterness. Or uh, there's something else called the magical berry. This is true. There's a, there's a berry that you can chew on that will turn bitter into sweet. Yes. I don't know if I've done a video on this. But, but, but so you could actually take sour yogurt. You can take... But we're not anything. eating yogurt on keto anyway. Okay, I'm just using this as an example. Okay. You could take something bitter uh -huh. and add, have this berry in your mouth, and it'll actually be sweet so after. So it actually gives you this sensation of su so sweet. So arugula would taste like sweet arugula. a cake. Yeah, I think that would be a great... <laughs> I, I think we're going to go after that, Karen. We're going to do that. Okay? Okay. Okay, so it's time for some more information for people. Okay, so this is another t tip. Just because I don't have a quiz, it's going to be a tip. tip. All right. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of like a quiz. All right. But I want to turn it into just a, a food for thought. Um, if you have a bad heart, if you have a heart damage, mm -hmm. um, typically the heart runs on glucose and it runs on fatty acids. Okay. But what happens is if you have a bad heart, not a broken heart, a, a sick heart. 
you have an impaired uh, ability to absorb that fuel. The same thing happens in the brain. When your brain starts getting damaged, you can't really absorb, absorb the glucose or the fatty acids. Well, you can't do it in the brain anyway. You can't absorb fatty acids. But as far as the heart goes, um, what really me messes with the heart muscle is you can't get the fuel anymore. And so you start, the heart cells start to get enlarged. You start developing uh, scar tissue. You start developing um, an enlarged uh, left side of the heart. The ventricle starts getting bigger. So you have all these electrical problems, and then you get a heart attack. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it just so happens there's another fuel that you can bypass this whole thing with and dramatically increase the oxygen to that heart. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. Ketones. Ah, shocking. Ketones. The same thing with a, a brain that's degenerating. You have Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. The brain loves ketones. Mm. It bypasses the mechanism, the different fuel system. So to support a damaged brain, and especially a heart, you guys need to run your body on ketones. If you have your parents, your grandparents, get them on ketones with the healthy keto, and they'll start to actually have um, improvements. Now, the number one symptom for a heart problem, this would be a good quiz. Okay. Let's just ask people. Okay. What's the number one classical uh, symptom for a bad heart? See if you guys can guess it. I and think I know what it is. While you're guessing it, I need to go to no no uh, Noel. Noel from Memphis, Tennessee. Go ahead, Noel. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, I'm so happy to talk to you. Um, I'm originally from Crow's Landing, California, but I'm here in Memphis, Tennessee, vacationing. Nice. Oh, okay, great. Anyway, um, yes, I started acquiring the supplements you recommended, the vitamin D3 and K2, but I also acquired the cod liver oil. And can I take them together, or would I be taking too much vitamin D at one time? Good question. Uh, you cannot overdo, over, overdo your vitamin D with cod liver oil, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. But cod liver oil has four things. Uh, it has vitamin A, vitamin D, Okay, and a nice little 50-50 balance. But it also has the DHA, which is a, a omega-3 fatty acid, and an EPA, which is another type of omega-3 uh, fatty acid. So those two together, um, so you have all four things. Um, and that's why we recommend cod liver oil. It's very, very important. It, cod liver oil does not have K2. So yes, you can take both of them. Thanks for your uh, question. All right, what do we got, Karen? All right, so uh, interesting, earlobe crease, uh, edema or uh, inflammation, uh, fingernail changes, chest pain, cold feet, but the number one answer, yeah. shortness of breath. Okay, guys, um, you're close. Oh, that was my but answer. no cigar. Oh. Um, the answer is, Decrease capacity for exercise. In other words, fatigue when you exercise. Oh. Well, this if you close. exercise and you run out of gas really fast, suspect it's a heart problem. That's the number one wow. symptom is you just can't. Why? Why is that? Because when the heart muscle gets damaged, you lose the ability for that heart to push blood and oxygen through the body. Mm. And so this is why ketones, the preferred feel for the heart muscle is essential. The other thing is you need vitamin E and the complete complex too. You can actually improve the heart muscle very fast with vitamin E. If you're getting vitamin E, uh, get the, the one that has tocopherols, mixed tocopherols and tocotrienols. Okay. Can't say that. Okay. So together because that's the complete complex and you can improve. Um, and then so as you go in keto, and you take vitamin E and you do healthy keto. The first thing that's going to improve, and, the, and it happens pretty fast, is like, oh my gosh, I can, I can exercise and I have more wind. I can actually go up the stairs and not out of breath. Mm. Um, that's why some people are close on the out of breath. Right. So it's exertion, fatigue with exertion. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Did you like that tip? I that was like good, it. wasn't it? That was a good tip. I think everybody has attention on that heart, heart issues. Why, why would that be? Why would people have attention on it? Yeah. 
because there's a lot of it going around and it's some the, scary stuff. I think number one death is heart attacks, right? Oh, I don't know what the number one death. No, I think number Very one common. death is drug overdose of prescription drugs. Okay, so number two okay. is heart, three, cancer. Um, okay. okay, so we need to go to David. He's been waiting patiently from Utah. Dave, are you there? Hi, yeah, it's me again. Um, I don't know if you still remember me, but yeah, I'm from Oregon. How are you guys doing? I'm doing good. Good, how's it going? Good. Okay, well, the, w the weird thing was I was having a salad. I had um, I had sriracha and uh, cedar dressing on it, and then I had a couple of bites of it, and all of a sudden I had started having inflammation in my pancreas. And I it was, um, and I was in, um, I was in chest pain. Um, I was in like stomach pain for four and a half, four hours until I was sent to the emergency room. Okay. And so wow. they found out that I was, um, had inflammation in my, um, inflamed in my pancreas. So anyways, I was wondering what's the best thing to do to um, help that because right now it is having me on a liquid diet or right now I'm doing intermittent fasting right now as well. So what, what so was this dressing? Was what, did it have that? cyanide in it or something? What was the dressing that you used? <laughs> No, it was just regular um, Caesar dressing. It was regular what? Caesar, Caesar dressing. dressing. Oh, okay, okay. So regular Caesar let me, dressing. Let, Dave, let me, yeah. I just have to say Plus this. sugar and soy. And Here's the thing. Kinds of things. You have to realize that 90%, 95%, 99%, 99.999% of all the dressings out there are loaded with soy oil, some corn oil, definitely sugar, maltodextrin, so you're consuming omega-6 fatty acids that are inflammatory, which create inflammation, like in different organs, hint, hint. So you need to do a really good healthy version um, or a healthy version of a dressing with, with uh, olive oil and some vinaigrette. That's what you need to do. But you need to read the instructions or uh, ingredients and make sure it doesn't have that. Uh, Virgin olive oil would be the best. Now, some people think that the virgin olive oil is uh, some, like a olive that, you know, didn't get pregnant yet. That's not what virgin olive oil means, okay? You didn't hear that, did you? You know, okay. I, I just, was reading and then I, I, I caught a little bit of what you said and I... <laughs> All right, we'll just go on. We'll just move on. Okay. So Dave, um, dressings. Read the labels, okay, and you'll be fine. All right, so now we need to go to social media because I don't want to neglect uh, people from Facebook or YouTube. Well, we appreciate that. I'm glad you do. And um, so this comes up every week. So I guess people who aren't watching every week, you need to watch every week so you can get the answer. But um, Ramadan. Yeah. You fast. Right. So when people ask questions about Ramadan and fasting, I mean, Ramadan is fasting. So the key in doing Ramadan successfully is not in the fasting. It is what you eat when the fasting time is over. Right. Yeah. You want to say or anything before about it that? starts. Yeah, I, I, think, I, starts, I think um, I, I don't know a lot about it, but as far as what you can eat, and uh, if you can eat anything you want, if you just do the healthy version of keto, and boom, you're fasting all day long. It's actually very, very helpful for people who want to get started in doing jo some fasting. Yeah, and that'll actually get you adapted. Right. And then you continue it. Right. Okay. Um, well, that was all. I mean, was feeling a, a lot of different Ramadan religions fastest. use fasting. Yeah. I mean, because it's stood the test of time it's for a reason. It's a very smart thing to do. They knew way back that it was a good thing to do. Yeah. I, I think here's another point I want to bring up, Karen. Yeah. And then I'll zip it.com. Um, here's the thing. I don't think the average person knows how vital and the effects that fasting can, can have on their body. They don't realize, they, they don't realize what, it, what it really is. It might seem like a little thing, like, what's that going to do about eating? But there's some magical things that happen when you go on a fast. I mean, literally, mind-blowing things. I'm talking your, 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 gen your cellular genetics switch over into certain genes that start repairing for the first time in years. Our body is designed to withstand 
starving and not eating for periods of time. The mm -hmm. body likes it. We were, we were not designed to eat every three hours. And some people that tell you that fasting is dangerous because you need to eat every three hours, they're completely delirious. So you, you want to... <laughs> Unless it's you, in which case you're just not. Right, unless you're it's temporarily confused. Yeah. I so if you're if you're new to fasting, guys, and you're just watching this for the first time, I'm telling you, you should try it. You should really try it. Do it correctly. I have a lot of videos on it, and you are going to be literally shocked of the benefits. I mean, you literally, you grow a new brain, not just the entire brain, but certain parts of the brain, like um, the brain called the uh, the part of the brain called the hippocampus, which has it's like the relay switch to your, your data files for memory. So all of a sudden you start remembering things, your mood comes up, your inflammation goes down. Just fascinating. So I, mean, I, just I think the, the moral of the story What is the moral? Healthy keto and intermittent fasting. And I say healthy keto. This is a, a Dr. Berg right point. Right there. One of these. There's, they're everywhere now. Because there's a lot of keto out there that's whatever. A lot of versions of a keto. A lot of versions of keto. A lot of manufacturing companies jumping on the keto bandwagon because it's very, very popular. Uh, Vitamin Shop has a whole section now. It's just keto. People are jumping on this bandwagon. You can't assume, just because it says keto, that, that it's healthy. Also, the concept of snacking, keto snacks. This is just a different thing. Healthy keto and intermittent fasting is a Dr. Berg thing. But my point, you want to know, point? Wanna know my point? I'm waiting for your point. <laughs> Get to the point. My point is think for yourself. Ooh, you, that's a new concept. You have to understand. This is not um, uh, a philosophy where you're just told what to do. You know, so and so is telling me what to do, and so I'm going to do that, and it didn't work, so now I'm going to do that. And I'm gonna, you really. You, you need to be educated, and that's one thing I love about these guys who follow you and um, are on these uh, social media platforms because the vast majority of people do think for themselves, and they are interested in understanding and, and yeah. doing some research. And so you need to be a label reader. You need to understand what's up with your cholesterol. Why is we every, you know, seven times a, a, an hour we get the question, my cholesterol went up when I started doing keto. Why is that? You know, use use the four thousand you know videos. Yeah, that was my point. Thank you for your point. The end. It's well taken. Your point is well taken. Thank you. Um, it's very very important to um, <coughs> to understand the why. Yeah. Not just what to do. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do in my videos. I and I don't. And I, I kind of I create the videos like I want to listen to them. I don't want long introductions. I like people to get to the point. Don't give me a lot of extra things. And then get in and get out. Like, don't drag on. Does that on mean that the introduction with my um, doing the dance, the dance I was going to do, uh, right. for all of your videos? Right. You can do your own separate videos on that. Okay. How about that? Okay. Um, yeah, and I'm really excited. I got a new board. I have a new board. I know. It's a, it's a smart board. And so you can, it's huge. And you can actually, no more markers. And you could do all sorts of cool things. I'm just trying to figure out how to use it. But hey, Joanne, you're from. Um, St. Louis Obispo. St. Louis Obispo. Obispo. St. Louis Obispo. Oh, there you go. California. St. Louis Obispo. St. Louis Obispo. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you for taking my call. Um, I um, originally looked at your website and took your test before you had your book out, and it seemed like across the board everything was adrenal. Mm. And I had followed some other sites and I tried keto and it didn't go great, but then I went back and I thought, I'm just going to follow Dr. Berg <laughs> because you had the best advice. And I read your book and I realized that the first question before the test was, you know, if you have a problem digesting fats, don't take the test. You have a liver body type. Mm. And I thought, oh, because my, my body is... Even though I had all the other symptoms of adrenal, my, my stomach is more of a pot belly. Got it. So I started doing health, yeah, I started doing healthy keto. It's been going great. I've lost weight. I'm doing Pilates. Um, I, I have all this energy, but I'm not losing the pot belly. Okay. I'm losing it in other places. 
And so, and the, the recommendations are very different between adrenal and liver. So I'm wondering what to do. Yeah, I think you have one of my um, earlier books. Um, honestly, I'm just going to tell you right now, since you, um, since you're asking this question, I would, if you go to drberg.com, right on the front page, I actually just give you a summary of what diet you need to start on. It's, it's basically, it's it's kind of like the the basic new eating plan that everyone, regardless of your body type, should go on. If you're an adrenal, if you're this, it's a basic thing. If you just, you can actually print it out for free and uh, use it. But I recommend that. I also, on my blog and on YouTube, if you find the video, start here for, for beginners, I actually walk you through it. You should watch some of those beginning videos because if you actually do this like I'm recommending, the stomach will go down, but you have to do the combination of the intermittent fasting as well. And for you, I would shoot for one meal a day. And that's going to make a huge difference in your belly size um, and your health. Thanks for your call, Joanne. Hopefully, we'll get some uh, follow up from you. Oh, we have to go to Jeff from Illinois because he's been waiting. And uh, you had a, a question about um, exogenous ketones, right? That's correct, yes. I, uh, first of all, I love you guys. This is awesome. I love the time we can get some actual answers right away, so we thank you for that. Um, my question is, I have no problem fasting, but when I do get a little bit of a hunger, you know, they say to drink a, a cup of coffee or something. I've never had a cup of coffee before in my life, so I'm, I'm just not a fan of coffee. So I guess my question is, if I have some exogenous ketones at maybe the noon hour or something like that to kind of help with my fast, Will that break my fast? Got it. This is a really interesting question. I want to clarify it because if you're, if you're basically taking ketones, you're, yes, you're going to break your fast and you're going to slow down your weight loss, but you're not adding sugar. You're not adding sugar, so it's a little different. Exogenous ketones um, pretty much bypass your body's ability to produce them, and you're actually running off ketones that are already in the ketone form. So if your goal, if one of your goals is to lose weight and you take these ketones, then your body doesn't have to burn its own fat. It's going to live off the ketones that you're taking. So from that standpoint, it does slow down your ability to lose weight. That's my, my viewpoint on that because your body's fat is not being tapped into. Um, I do recommend exogenous ketones for basically two situations. One is if you're very frail and you have Alzheimer's or Parkinson's. Okay, so let's do that. Or if you're doing uh, long distance running and you want some extra energy. But you may want benefit from maybe like a certain tea um, that you can take that'll actually help you fast for a longer period of time. That might actually be a better idea than the coffee. Any like specific one? You can do the fasting tea. Not that I'm biased, but you can check that out. Thanks for your call, Jeff. All right. No, because it's, it's after time. 12. It's time. All right. Listen, guys, we really appreciate your attention. Yes, but we have to uh, plug again the Keto Summit. Everybody that's washing, washing your dishes right now. <laughs> or Stop your washing and Stop start washing. washing. And uh, figure out how you're going to get to the Keto Summit. It's such, uh, oh, not an overload, it's such a dose of education and uh, it will really launch you forward in your own health and helping other people. We find that just about everybody we met last year really had, was on a mission to help other people as well. And so it's August 31st and September 1st. It's in, uh, it's at the Gaylord Hotel in Maryland, right outside of Washington, D.C. It's over Labor Day weekend. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be a great way to bring your whole family. Yeah, and I just want to mention one thing. Yeah. When you actually do something that works, a lot of you have great results. You want to strengthen that successful action and do more of that, mm -hmm. especially if it's for your own survival and your health. The Keto Summit is just going to help strengthen your, your knowledge that you already have and your success that you already have. And if you're new to it, it'll actually really give you all the basics. But, I mean, you want to kind of reinvest in things that work things that have helped you. So come, learn yep. more, 
and improve what you already have on to take it to the next level. That's right. And show up to this show next week, next Friday, because we are going to be giving away some tickets to the Keto Summit. So if you want a chance, we're going to be giving a couple of them away. Uh, like in two. In, well, maybe more. You never know, because who's the queen of giving tickets away? You are, Karen. That's right. That's right. Okay, great. So we'll see you next Friday. All right. Have okay, a good bye. one. See ya. Okay. Bye.